If you grew up watching Cartoon Network in the early 2000s, I'm sure at some point growing up you watched or at least heard of Shaolin Showdown. Shaolin Showdown has always had a special place in my heart because it was one of the first cartoons I'd seriously watched that had an overarching storyline to it. Every episode would tie into the next in some way, shape, or form. With so many cartoons during that era having an episodic style where no episodes would connect with no story really moving forward, this style was incredibly cool to me. I always wanted to watch the new episodes right when they came out because I was so eager to see how the story would progress. The story revolved around four main characters named Omi, Ramundo, Kimiko, and Clay. They were chosen to be the four Shaolin elemental dragon warriors entrusted to finding the mystical objects known as Shengong Wu, which were mystical objects with powers that balance the forces of good and evil. Anytime a fight for one of these objects would occur, the fight would be decided by a Shaolin showdown. Usually the challenger will decide what kind of event they will compete in in order to win the Wu, but that's not always the case. The challenges would vary from obstacle course races, needle in the haystack, and even basketball. The showdowns themselves could have varying stakes too, like the Shen Yi Bu Dare, Cosmic Class Showdown, a Showdown Trio, and more. The main characters are great, especially Ramundo and Omi. It definitely felt like they got more development than the other two, which was sort of a shame. It would have been nice if there was a little bit more focus on Kimiko and Clay at some points. Even though I say that, I still thought the idea of Ramundo becoming the squad leader by the end of the series was a really cool twist. Even though Omi was painted to be the strongest and had the most experience, a lot of the time indirectly through showings or directly by people like Chase Young, Ramundo had more growth as a character slash as a Shaolin dragon than Omi did, and he was able to prove that in the final Shaolin showdown. Of course, this series wasn't perfect, but I still liked it a lot. The quality of the episodes seemed to noticeably drop in Season 3 with the Wudai weapon additions and Hanwell Bean being added as a new overarching main antagonist. Even still, when it ended, I was sad because they ended it in a way where the monks were going to be starting a new journey in a sense, and we the audience wouldn't be able to see any of it. That is until seven years later when a continuation series now titled Shaolin Chronicles premiered on Disney XD. Seeing these small teasers had me very excited. Finally, after all this time, the series would get a proper conclusion. At least, that's what I thought. Before I get into this, I've noticed for a while that the majority of the people who have watched my videos on a regular basis aren't actually subscribed to my channel, so consider subscribing if you haven't yet. It helps me out a ton, and you'll be able to find my videos much easier than before. Thanks. Shaolin Chronicles turned out to be a major disappointment, not only as a standalone show, but definitely as the sequel series it was advertised to be. This show felt a lot more like a reboot of sorts rather than a sequel. For starters, Ramundo was no longer the leader of the Shaolin Dragon team. The rest of the gang got promoted to Shoku Warrior like he did, but he no longer had a shot collar role for the team like the end of Showdown implied he had. All of that development he got was basically thrown out the window, which really sucks. Ramundo's whole character arc in the original show was one of my favorite aspects, so having Chronicles act as if it never happened really felt like a slap in the face. The entire main cast, with the exception of Omi, had completely new voice actors as well. Shaolin Chronicles production was being managed in Canada, where it's required by law that any voice actor working for a television show must have Canadian citizenship in order to work. Tara Strong, the voice of Omi, and Jennifer Hale, the voice of Kat Nappe, were the only original VAs who were able to continue to work for the show. Having a lot of these voices changed as drastically as they did made a lot of these characters feel like completely different characters than before, with the exception of Omi. Don't get me wrong though, I'm not trying to say any of these new voice actors are bad at their craft, they just don't sound close enough to the original voices, especially Kimiko. I love Jennifer Hale as a voice actor, she's done great work on shows like Codename Kids Next Door, The Powerpuff Girls, Totally Spies, etc. But her version of Kimiko sounds nothing like Greg Griffin's does. I wanted that woman, I have seniority. But how about a big, warm hug, you clever little monk, you? One could argue because Kimiko is technically older than she was at the end of Shaolin Shodown that her voice changed, but it's too drastic of a change for me. It's like, there's no similarities at all. Props to Eric Bowser for voicing what felt like half the general cast on the show, though. He voiced Ramundo, Jack Spicer, Panda Bubba, Grandmaster Dashi, Master Monk Guan, and Kimiko's father. That man's got range for days. Shengon Wu names had to be changed completely as well due to Warner Brothers owning the rights to the original names. My issue is, why are they basically reusing old Wu to begin with and acting like they never found it before? Like, the Shroud of Monster camo is literally the Shroud of Shadows, but at the same same time, they already have Wu like the Orb of Torpedo, formerly known as the Orb of Tornami, in their possession. It feels like there's zero sense of continuity with this show. Wu Ya somehow got trapped in the puzzle box again after the finale of Shaolin Showdown and before the start of Chronicles. Zero explanation was given as to how she ended up in there again, by the way. Diddly squat. Hannibal Roy Bean, my favorite little vegetable, is just 
gone without a trace again with no explanation or mention in Chronicles. He actually wasn't even my favorite villain from that show or anything, but his role in season three was major. He was the reason Chase Young went to the Halen side and became a mortal. For one of the main overarching villains from Shaolin Showdown to vanish like that and with no explanation is very odd. If Chase Young was able to return, why not Hannibal? The best I can do is assume he was done in during that giant clash between the Shaolin Dragons and the villains during the last scene in Shaolin Showdown. Of course, with this series taking place at least a couple of years in the future with how much older Rai, Clay, and Kimiko look, it's understandable they'd look different physically, but no character changed more in terms of physical appearance than Dojo. Dojo went from mainly green to mainly yellow. Not sure what the purpose in that was. It felt kind of random. Correct me if I'm wrong, but in Chinese culture, green dragons represent nature while the yellow ones are associated with solidity. Yellow dragons were also associated with royalty being the most revered of the dragons. So I suppose it's possible Dojo went through some kind of evolution during the time skip, making him more revered slash powerful than he was before. It's cool to think about it like that, but since his color change was never talked about nor explained in Chronicles, meh. Chase Young felt like a completely different character in Chronicles 2. When it came to all the serious villains from Shaolin Showdown, Chase Young was without a doubt my favorite. His character felt so much more complex than the rest of the main villains. His past with Master Monk Guan, how he used to be a good guy fighting alongside Dashi before he met Hannibal Bean, the intense conversations with Omi about strength, differing ideals, at times siding with the monks to take out bigger threats like when those giant spiders attacked, showing an alternate timeline how things could have been if Chase did stay good, I loved all of it. Sadly, Chronicles decided to change him from complex to as simple as possible. In Chronicles, he just acts like the typical evil final boss who's incredibly power hungry and wants to take over the world. There wasn't any more meaning behind his character anymore other than me, Halen, me want to destroy world. Doing things like cry over that egg in episode 19, like crying? Like that felt so out of character for him. If anything, it was more like Hannibal Bean's personality in Chase Young's body. Speaking of episode 19, Chase being quote unquote related to Omi felt like the biggest ass pull on the planet. They had been through so much in Showdown, worked together and fought against each other several times, but Omi giving him an egg was the straw that broke the camel's back to tell him they were related? His backstory on how he became evil was pretty much completely changed too. Instead of becoming tempted by the Lao Main Long Soup to gain immortality, he just sought power that he couldn't have in the past because his older brother, who didn't exist in Showdown, was better than he was at riding dragons. What is it with Chronicles adding these random family relations that were never mentioned or hinted at in Showdown? Kimiko has a sister now who has never mentioned in Showdown, yet Jesse, Clay's sister, didn't make any type of cameo or have any mention in Chronicles. Even though Chase took the biggest hit personality-wise with the writing changes, my personal biggest gripe when it came to returning character changes was Jack Spicer. Shaolin Showdown Jack Spicer is one of the best comedic relief villains ever written in animation. No doubt in my mind about that. There was almost never a dull moment with him in Showdown. When hunting the elusive wolf, you have to move as quiet as a cat. Oh, ow, 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 ow. Oh, that hurts. <laughs> this is your worst nightmare. You're more pathetic than me. <laughs> Comedy goals. Chronicles did try to keep him as a comedic relief villain. Sadly, he just wasn't nearly as funny to me. I think I could watch a montage of every Spicer clip from Chronicles without genuinely laughing or even smirking. No disrespect to Eric Bauza, I just don't think he was able to replicate that same energy that Danny Cooksey brought to the table originally. Now for the new characters. There was a new villain introduced in Chronicles named Shadow slash Willow. She was Chase's right-hand woman created from one of his ribs. She pretended to be a girl by the name Willow to get intel on the monks for Chase. She had potential that was never fully realized in my opinion. And as time went on, she tried to break away from Chase to become her own independent villain. After failed attempts to gain powers from the Lao Meng Long Soup, she eventually teamed up with Wuya instead. That team up was super short lived though because Wuya betrayed her in the last episode and they kind of just left it at that because the second season was never made. Just Wuya and that biker gang chasing after Shadow in the sky. It felt like her character never got a proper conclusion and it never will. Also, wasn't super into how she was revealed to be working for Chase in the same episode she was introduced in. It would have been cool if there was at least some build up there if she was going to be an overarching antagonist that stayed in the story this long. It would have felt a lot more surprising if the audience only knew her as Willow for the first 10 episodes or so and then find out she was working for Chase. I feel like same episode reveals like that only work if 
the villain is going to be a one-off villain that gets beat in the same episode and doesn't really have a significant role from there on out. Kind of like Vlad from Shaolin Showdown. He had a major role in one episode, then was ultimately beaten in the same episode. He did have other minor appearances, but never had any real impact on the story beyond his introduction episode. The issue with Shadow is she was one of the overarching main antagonists that played a role in just about every episode, so having her revealed to be a double agent from the get-go just didn't sit right with me. I must save the worst for last, though. The dumbest addition to the Shaolin Chronicles cast ping pong. Real name, Boris Antonio Rolf Jean-Pierre Garlagrand IV. Haha, <laughs> long name funny. Since his name was too long, they decided to call him ping pong instead. Do what you will with that info. Why on planet Earth did he have to become a regular member of the team? Why couldn't Jermaine have taken that spot? Instead, they gave Omi his own mini-me. Literally a carbon copy of Omi, just slightly shorter with green glasses. Even spoke with a higher pitched voice. Me? I know who I am. I'm a dude playing a dude disguised as another dude. What? Ping Pong is the type of character that if they're going to exist, they should be in one single filler slash non-plot related episode and never appear again. Not become one of the main cast. His element in battle was wood? Isn't that technically earth though, since wood comes from trees which grow from the earth? Even if you're not going to bring Jermaine back, they could have at least done some kind of experimenting with character design, right? Hell, if Willow was just Willow and not Shadow and joined instead, I think that would have been better than Ping Pong. Such a waste of a character slot, it's unreal. The Shaolin showdowns themselves drag drastically changed in Chronicles 2. The art style and animation changed from 2D to 3D CGI during showdowns. The characters also wore these weird Tron style suits. It felt super out of place compared to the rest of the show's environments. Whenever 3D CGI is used in cartoons, it makes me think of modern technology and computers. Hence why shows like Code Lyoko used it and made it work well. Shaolin Chronicles doesn't. I get showdowns are supposed to create these arenas slash obstacle courses that make the characters look like they're in a completely different world and they want the audience to feel that as well, but the original showdown already did a good job at that while staying in 2D. This 3D change seemed to act as a way to emphasize on that fact, and it wasn't really necessary. The general animation for the show, even while in 2D, seemed to be a downgrade of how it looked originally. I can't really blame the main minds behind the show for something like that, but even still, it's a shame when a show that has so many action scenes isn't able to deliver very well. Also, the lip syncing with characters is really bad at times. Here's one particularly bad instance. If only I could take a sip of the Lao Meng lemon juice and get away from Chase's clutches. Like, what the heck was that, dude? <laughs> one of the few things that they tried to do well that they didn't get a chance to in Showdown was give Kimiko some development with the whole dragon control thing. Sadly, the execution felt cruddy. Her visions of the dragon came out of nowhere with no real buildup. It's like they rushed it because they knew a second season done in the same manner as this one could never happen, which is kind of sad to think about, to be honest. Shaolin Chronicles just didn't seem to know what kind of show it wanted to be. Is it a sequel series? A series existing in a parallel universe? It's on standalone show? The major continuity issues alongside major characters completely changing personalities slash no longer existing in the universe made it very hard to treat it as a genuine sequel series to Shaolin Showdown. It ended up being far too lazy and too different from the original source material to be considered as such in my eyes. In all honesty, I would have rather had Shaolin Showdown ended completely the way it did originally if I had known Chronicles was going to be that much of a disappointment. Maybe someday they'll have another chance to get it right. The future is never certain. Unless that day comes, we have to accept the Shaolin Showdown franchise ended on an incredibly sour note. Let me know in the comments down below your thoughts about Shaolin Chronicles if you seen it before. If there's anything you liked slash disliked about the show that I didn't mention in this video, feel free to tell me. I'd love to know your thoughts. Of course, if you enjoyed the video, be sure to leave a like down below and another reminder to subscribe if you haven't yet. But for now, I will see you guys next time. Peace out. Take care. Bye-bye.